Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, because the media has read the linear objective, so I just proceed to 5.1. What is an organization? Next slide, Imad. Okay. What is an organization? An organization is a group of two or more people working together to achieve a common set of goals. It's very easy to memorize it. So next, uh, how to develop organ organization chart. Okay. Uh, firstly, the organization chart is the complete organization situation visually it reveal the company organization structure uh, as you can look in the textbook uh, the figure 5.1 okay. as you can see the chain of command is the line of authority that stands from the highest to the lowest level of the organization and in that figure it show uh, some has broken line, which means it not part of the direct chain of command. Command, sorry, command. These people call adversary or staff opposition. So that is the organization chart. Uh, next slide is some example of organization chart. Next slide, Imad. Okay, okay. okay. These are uh, some example. Of organization chart. All right, right, continue, continue. Okay, then continue. Okay, next, uh, the major consideration for organizing a business. Next slide, Imam. Okay. Uh, Faiz, These are the major Faiz, considerations. Uh, Faiz, can you yes, please explain them? or relate the chart that you use as example just now? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, as you can see. Sorry. Wait, wait. Hmm. Okay, the... You can see the first, the first origin, the uh, the right side. Okay, the right side. The right side. The first is the president. I'm sorry, it's because it's too small. Ah, uh, you can just explain on Masjid CFS that that one is simpler and bigger, so we can see compared to organizational structure of IUM that one too small for us to see clearly. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. So the first, ah, uh, as you know, the first, the top, ah, uh, is the president. Now who can, who has the most authority to command his subordinate? And the lower, like the Imam and Bilal unit, the trend unit, unit is just uh, who can do the work that, that the order from the president. Is it okay, madam? Sorry, madam. I can hear you. We can't hear madam. you. Madam. Let the chain of command. Ah, ah of refer command. to the uh, organization chart. Uh, this organization chart shows yes. the chain of command. So, uh, you explain. Uh, the chain of command of this Masjid CFS organization chart? Mm. Okay, so the first is president. Sorry, I, I can't see the name. Okay. So uh, the president. Oh. 
He did president and she comment. Even you can't see clearly. <laughs> we all can't see clearly too. Okay. Let's try to zoom in. Nah, tengok tu nampak. Ni apa post dia ni? We have um okay for masjid CFS we have uh, here deputy director ah uh, that is the yes. top okay ah uh, the top is the deputy director ah uh, so the deputy director is the, is personal assistant ah uh, that what we refer to the um dotted line if you refer to the example figure 5.1 you can say uh, this one is like advisor okay as advisor but yes, will madam. not involve directly in managing the organization but the management the management of masjid is under deputy director ustaz hanif so under Hustad ah, Anif, ah, ah, under Hustad Anif, we have Imam and Bilal unit, training unit and admin unit. So all these unit will receive command from the deputy director. All right, guys, can you understand? Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. All right. Okay, we move on to the next slide. Okay. After the next slide, is major consideration for organizing a business. Uh, so, this, these are the major consideration. First is job design. Second is departmentalization. Third is delegation. Fourth is plan of management. And lastly, chain of command. Uh, the job design, departmentalization and delegation will be explained by other group member in the next topic so i just read, read to you for the span of management and chain of command for this span of management it's mean uh that in the book determine the number of subordinate who will report to each manager and the lastly chain of command Command establish the organization chain of command by design that the thing, the position with direct authority and those that are support position. Mm, that's all. If you if you do not understand any part, you can ask me. All right, this one is just the summary of the subtopic that will be discussed next part. All right, so next part, the other presenter will explain more on all these job designer, departmentalization, delegation, and chain of command. Span of management has been removed. So we just touch on what is span of management, but the detail 5.5 is not covered anymore. So you guys, please uh, cross out 5.5, yeah? Span of management, we just cover the surface. That is, what is span of management? We will not go detail to this anymore, all right? Okay, I repeat, please remove 5.5, okay? We move to 5.2, job designer. Okay, uh, so now, uh, job design. Uh, basically, job design is all about tasks and responsibility that are grouped into a specific job. And job design often can result because of the low and the job design. So this is why job design is important to overcome this issue. So next is job uh, specialization. Uh, job specialization, next slide, next. Okay. Job specialization, as it said in the book, is separation of all organizational activities 
into distinct tasks. Distinct tasks here means that a uh, different task, a specific task. And the second point is the assignment of different tasks to different people. So basically job specialization shows how important the specialization to make, uh, to make the production more efficient when the workers focusing on uh, one thing, focusing one task. So it is like a big task assigned and divided to a different people so that the task scope becomes smaller and easier to do. Um, next. In my, in my next slide. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Can I get one? Yeah. Okay. 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 No, 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 no. Okay. News. Okay. Yeah. Did you? Did you? Did you? Dah. Dah kemat. Eh. Ah, di bawah lagi. Ini ke, ini kau buat. Ah, ini bersegi, ini bersegi. Ah, lagi. Ah, okay, okay. The rational ah for specialization. The rational for ah specialization first is too large for one person to handle. Meaning that one person cannot afford to do everything. They need the help. They need the hand. And second is ah be able to learn to do it very efficiently. Meaning that when a person are given a specific task, a highly specialized task, so they are able to learn to do it very efficiently uh, because they're doing the same job, uh, the same task. And third is does not lose time changing work. Meaning that um, when a person focusing on one particular job, they will become more uh, expert and more efficient in their job. Uh, because they are doing the same job over and over again, so that we save time. Instead of they have to switch to another task or operation from one to another. Um, a number, uh, number four is easier to design specialized equipment. Um, and of course, it's easier the job training. Uh, next, next slide. Okay, let's say. In the in the organizational line is for producing car, for example, for ton or uh, for dua, they do have this job specialization where there are the there is the there are the workers we are who work in the in associate associated in producing the cars. Uh, there are the workers who work in the office uh, as the manager as a marketing role as a promoting. And um, if, if there is not a proper delegation, like one person do all the job, all the different tasks by himself, by themselves, the consequent is may, uh, the consequent is the progression of the work becomes slow and less efficient uh, as they have to do many tasks in one time. And also the procrastination and maybe the carelessness, carelessness of uh, in performing the task will happen. Um, and I think normally the workers cannot do all the job. They need more workers. Uh, okay, next. Alternatives to job specialization. Alternatives to job specialization is an uh, explanation of the negative consequence because of the Job specialization.
and job enrichment is the solution. Uh, the problem of the boredom, this cause of dissatisfaction of the employee, and, and so on. Okay, job rotation. Job rotation uh, uh, is shifting of employees from one job to another. <laughs> This approaches widen the activities of the workers with a variety range of work. Okay, job rotation is like if you work in a fast food restaurant uh, like Netgi or KFC, normally they will apply job rotation. Uh, for example, if today you work as a you work as a cashier, maybe the other day you will you will work as uh, in charge for the drive through, and the third day you will in charge for the in the kitchen. Um, so job rotation improve the multi-skilling task, especially when it comes to a situation that uh, they have a short of workers, they, um, the workers need to take emergency leaves. So when everyone have a deep, uh, can do everything, can do a different task, so it is easier for the manager to replace and change their workers um, change their workers because they all have the skill and the experience uh, by with every section and task given to them. Um, uh, next. Okay, uh, job enlargement. Job enlargement and job ratio have the similarity but they are actually different. Um, increase uh, job enlargement, increasing the number of different tasks uh, and not, uh, not quality or challenge. Meaning that in other words, adding responsibility uh, to existing role. Not the quality here means that generally they are given all the different tasks, but they with, within the same level, within the same level, not high level. They uh, do all the different tasks, but just in the same level uh, in the organization. And in job enlargement, you have to do many tasks, but you are not allowed to make any decision. You don't have to make any decision. Your supervisor and or your manager will make the decision for you. You just need to perform the job. And for job arrangement, increasing the number of different tasks and giving the workers the authority. Meaning that job arrangement, uh, job arrangement, given the authority and control at the same time, you can make the decision and to perform the task as well. The goal of job enrichment is to creating a create a motivating job and make uh, adding extra responsibility that make the job more meaningful for the workers and they have the authority and control uh, uh, for what job and decision they want and the difference between job enlargement and job arrangement is in terms of the decision making and uh, but they both have to do many tasks, and uh, the different uh, the other difference is job enrichment means improvement, upgrading, uh, development. But job enlargement, uh, they're more to uh, adding more duties, uh, workload, increase workload. And if you can see, uh, if we can see here, if you compare both of these job enrichment, enlargement and job enrichment in terms of their position. Job enrichment has a high level because normally, job, uh, uh, normally the higher worker will make the decision. If you're just a normal worker, you cannot make any decision. So yeah, that's all. Okay, I just want to give example. How do you relate to our situation right now? Um, now we have the situation of job enlargement. Previously, lecturer just focusing on lecturing and also the admin work but now um, some of us have to do or have to be the facilitator for your usra so that is job enlargement okay so we are given more tasks to do instead of just focusing on our job that is lecturing and admin work all right is it clear clear all right Once again, madam, I don't get it. <laughs> madam. All right, all right. Now you can continue. 
Okay, this is the question. Um, can I just one person? Um, uh, what the, the, uh, the okay? The question is what the difference between job enlargement and job enrichment? Okay, and is Hazika? Um, job action gives the workers the authority to make decisions, while job enrich eh sorry, job enlargement does not give workers the authority to make decisions while job enrichment if the workers authority to make the decision correct thank you uh, okay so next is departmentalization um, what is departmentalization? Departmentalization is a process of grouping jobs into manageable units. It is subdividing work and workers into separate organizational units responsible for completing particular tasks. Next. Okay, so there are five common bases of departmentalization. First, um, departmentalization by function. Second, departmentalization by product. Third, departmentalization by location. And next, departmentalization by customer. Uh, and last, lastly, combination basis. Combination basis. Next. So, what is departmentalization by function? Uh, depart this departmentalization is creating departments on the basis of specialized activities of the business. Um, for example, um, I give the easiest example, which is um, Giant, because um, uh, they have department of finance, marketing, operation, human resource, and administration. Okay, next. Okay, second, departmentalization by product. Uh, it is organizing work and workers into separate units responsible for producing particular products or services. As you can see at here, I put an example, um, Canon company. Um, Canon produce more than one product, uh, which is which are printer, calculator, and camera. Um, so that we call um, Canon company is using departmentalization by product. Uh, they divided work and workers into separate units for producing particular products or services. Next. Depart um, third is departmentalization by location. Um, same example I use uh, is Giant. Um, depart this departmentalization is all activities according to the defined geographic area in which they are performed. Um, we we all know we all know that um, there are a lot of giant in Malaysia. There are giant in Kuala Terengganu, uh, giant in Kemaman. Uh, um, this departmentalization is um, grouping activities and responsibilities according to territory. Next. Next is departmentalization by customer. Um, this departmentalization is according to the needs of various customer populations. Here I put an example is bank. Um, bank provide um, uh, various types of uh, customer service. This I put um, four examples at here, which are uh, checking accounts, insurance, wealth management, and debit and credit cards. So, bank is using departmentalization by customer. So, they divided work and workers according to the needs of um, 
for particular kinds of customer. Okay. Understand? Okay, next. Next is combination investors. Um, here, I also put um, example Giant, Giant Mall because um, we all know Giant, right? Uh, Giant is the most easiest example uh, I give at here. So, um, um, this combination basis, few organizations as a bit only one departmentalization base, but many firms use several different bases within a single organization. It is where the organization structure in which two or more departmentalization most often products and functional are used together. Uh, for example, Giant. Giant um, functional and location. You you understand, right? Do, do you understand? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, that's all. Okay. Can you hear me, guys? Yes. Okay. Thank you for watching for the explanation. Now I will explain about 5.4 5. 5. delegation of authority. Okay, delegation means is about interesting someone else to do part of your job. But in the business, delegation of authority means division of authority empowers the work to the subordinate. Uh, it means that uh, you as a manager, share your work or part of your work to your subordinate. Okay, this is the delegation process or we call it the step of delegation in the organization. We assign responsibility. Responsibility, responsibility is the duty to do a job or perform a test. As I said, as I said uh, before, uh, you as a manager uh, give a test to your subordinate, or you as a higher level give a test to your uh, higher position, give a test to the lower position or the middle position. Okay, you understand that? Yes. Okay. okay, the second step is current authority. Uh, current authority within the organization, uh, which is the power within the organization to accomplish an assigned job or task. Uh, when you assign the job to your subordinate, you give them get how to complete the, the job or the task. That's the current authority. Okay, the last step is assign accountability. Uh, accountability is mean, uh, accountability is directly refer to do it or you must complete your job. That's the uh, accountability. Accountability is the obligation of worker to accomplish an assignment or test. Uh, it cannot be neglected. Mean uh, when you ask manager, when you delegate the authority to your subordinate, then your subordinate have responsibility to complete the task. But it's not mean that you, you the accountability is you is gone. No, it's just rest with you. Uh, okay, that you understand that. Yes. If you understand, can I ask any question? Okay, there are barriers of delegation. Okay, first one is clear the work will not get done. Uh, in some organization, you as a manager will afraid that if you give the test to your subordinate, uh, he or she not uh, complete the test in the period of time. Second is Fear the work will done too well, or we call it overshadowing. Uh, it means that some uh, you as manager, maybe you have a very good subordinate or excellent subordinate. You fear or afraid that he maybe notice from the higher position. Okay, the okay. one is uh, before that. Uh, do you understand what is subordinates, guys? Yes. Yes. What is subordinate? Yes. What is subordinate? 
in the lower position yes. in the lower position in the organization okay meaning that the manager is the higher position and the person who working under that manager we consider as subordinate all right okay let's continue uh, the third one is inability to plan and assign work effectively so some of the manager some of them is not disorganized meaning they don't know how to plan very well like that. okay uh, this two point i just add which is i can do a better feeling mean that the manager feel uh, he can do it better than his subordinate. Uh, the last one lack of cover lack of confidence and subordinate uh, it seems like the first one further work will not get done okay that's all for me Okay, sometimes the manager has his own standard and he afraid that if he delegate the job, the job would be done by subordinate, will not reach his standard. So that's why some manager, they prefer to do the job by himself rather than to delegate the, the task to his subordinate. Okay, so that is actually a problem when you have a uh, too high standard and you can't uh, trust people who's working under you. That would be a problem. It's like everything you want to do on your own. Okay, so that's actually a problem in organization. You have to trust uh, those who work under you, meaning you have to trust your subordinate. Okay. Okay, guys. If you have any question, get us. No. Okay, wait a second. Um. Okay. Um. Next, decentralization of authority. This topic is about how an organization makes decision. Um. There are two types of of how decision was made by an organization. First, decentralized, decentralized organization. Um, for the decentralized organiza organization, the organization management of authority. Uh, next slide. Um, the organization management of authority is widely in the lower organization level. And for the centralized organization, it is the vice versa for the decentralized organization, which is the management of authority is widely in the upper organization level. Um, okay, next. Um, next slide. Uh, factors that influence the extent to which a firm is decentralized. First, the external environment, environment in which the firm operates. For example, if the business environment is highly uncertain, the organization might not give a high degree of freedom to operating units. Second, the nature of decision to be made. The riskier or more important the decision, the greater is the tendency to centralize decision making. Next, the ability of lower level managers to make decisions. The, the ability of lower level managers, the organization is more likely to be decentralized. Um, okay, for the last is a firm that has traditionally uh, practiced centralization is likely to maintain that centralization in the future and vice versa. Um, next slide. Uh, okay, uh, here is the example for decentralized and centralized organization. Um, for example of decentralized organization is McDonald's um, and any other franchise firm. Each franchise restaurant in the chain is responsible for its own operation. Um, for centralized organization example is 
uh, a tracking company. Um, the managers make all operational decisions, sending information to individuals through this pages. Even self employed owner operators take direction from dispatches to determine where to go each day. So, um, in conclusion, neither decentralization or centralized is right or wrong. What works for other organizations may work or not work for another. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, do you have any question? You can ask them. The presenter, inshallah, they will try to help you to answer the question. You all clear? This is very short. I know. <laughs> no question. Everyone is quiet. No one want to respond. May I ask? Yeah, okay. Uh, they will try uh, to answer you. I'm uh, not clear about the accident environment. Um, what if, can you give like, uh, the examples of the accident environment that influence the firm? And this decentralization or centralization? Examples of accident environment. Okay, Efa, I think that part, Efa. Or anybody in the um, community? An example. Um. Can you answer, Efa? Um, uh, I will try to answer, but I don't know uh, um, this is right or wrong. Uh, um, an example for external environment is the the um, uh, the, the size of the business size of business or government uh, government the policy situation of politics yes yes good yes yes that's right uh, um, competition uh, yes okay Matia is it clear Yes, thank ah, you. Okay. External environment referring to something outside where organization cannot control. Like government policy, they cannot control. The competition, okay, the rival they have in the market, they cannot control. So they have to uh, adjust their own decision whether to design the company as decentralized or centralized. Okay, any other question? No question. All right. So, thank you, Faik, Alia, Fatid, Iman, and Efa um, for the presentation of Chapter 5. So, next session, inshallah, mm -hmm. Group 4 will present Chapter 6. And Chapter 6 will be uh, a bit longer than this one. So you guys, please read first, yeah, before the presentation and highlight that maybe there are parts that you are not clear. And before that, I want to remind you, please check either Google Classroom or the FB group. I have posted the material for your next project. Um, that is, um, it's all about the guidelines for your um, project. So uh, please read first. Uh, any part you are not clear, I will brief you later. All right? Any question? 
No question? So for tomorrow, you guys, before 8, get ready early. Alright? So the test, you can open the um, iTaklim. So iTaklim, you try open in case you need to reset your password ke. Like myself, I have to reset my password because I haven't used it for like one year. So, uh, my password is expired. I have to reset. You guys, please check first before the test tomorrow. No excuse, yeah? If you have problem tomorrow, you should check earlier. Okay? Check whether the the quiz is there. It's just you can't open it until 8 tomorrow. So tomorrow before 8, get ready in front of your laptop. 5 minutes, 10 minutes earlier, it's okay. Okay? Any questions? Yep. Uh, 8 a.m. or 8 p.m.? Eh, 8 a.m. Sorry, Masya Allah. 8 p.m. Not 8 a.m. Masya Allah. 8 p.m. Guys, 8 p.m. <laughs> eh, cepat sangatlah pula. 8 a.m. Tak sabar-sabar eh. Okay, 8 p.m. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Thank you, Arif. Okay. Alright. No question. So, we end our session. Surah La'an Sita Speaker Forum. Okay, see you. Um, bila? Ah, uh, on Thursday, yeah. Okay, bye. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Bye. Bye. Thank you, madam.